up giving it a five stars obviously this is not a wrap up Jan you don't have to say like obviously they're all five stars <sighs> Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I'm here with my top 10 for 2021. These were my favorite books of the year. These are not necessarily released in 2021, although there are quite a few that were because I got e-arcs of a lot of them. So thank you so much to the publishers who sent those my way because they ended up being some of my favorite books. So without further ado, let us get started. Coming in at number 10 is One Last Stop by Casey McQuestin. Red, White and Royal Blue was one of my favorite books. Of 2020 so I was very excited to read another one of their books. I'm pretty sure everybody knows what this is about but essentially it is about a 23 year old named August who moves to New York City to live with some very extravagant unique roommates. One day on the subway she meets a woman named Jane who she is instantly attracted to and as she gets to know Jane more she discovers that she is actually from the 1970s and is somehow stuck on the queue line. So August takes it upon herself to get Jane out of this subway loop and it's like the story of that. But these characters are what truly shine in this book. I loved literally every single one of them. And the found family dynamics of this book are chef's kiss. I love this ragtag group of friends so much. There's also a drag queen named Annie Depressant who, if you know me, I freaking love drag queens so she was a huge highlight of this book for me. There's also just so much representation jam-packed into this book in a way that felt very authentic, which I loved. I also was a big fan of the mystery aspect of this book because I was going into it thinking it was strictly like a romantic comedy kind of thing and I got so much more than I bargained for and I was so happy reading it so this is my number 10 spot. Next up coming in at number 9 is The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chatsky. This is another book where the characters really shone for me. The found family dynamics again really blew me out of the water. I feel like a lot of these books are either found family or just the characters were so lovable. I also just really loved the banter between these characters. I was laughing through a lot of the book which you wouldn't really expect in a high book but it was so much fun. Also can we just like take in the drama and the angst between Layla and Severin? I was here for it. I was living for it. I was just waiting for something to happen between them. I also just found the magic system to be so interesting and intriguing and I have not picked up the second book yet or the third book obviously but I need to because I really do want to know what happens in the rest of the trilogy because I love these characters and they're just like my little babies and I need to know what happened to them. Coming in at number eight is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I <laughs> put off reading this book for so long and I do not know why honestly because every Everybody was right. It is incredible. It basically follows Pip who lives in a small town where a tragic event happened five years ago where a high school senior named Andy Bell was allegedly murdered by her boyfriend Sal Singh. Only Pip does not believe that is the case and so she uses her senior capstone project to investigate this case and discover who the true killer is. So with the help of Sal's brother, Pip actually uncovers a lot of secrets including the identity of the actual killer who will stop at nothing to keep their identity hidden and it's like the story of that but this writing style and the format is so addictive. One of my favorite things in books is when there's mixed media so there are transcripts in here, emails, letters, and it's just such a fun way to tell a story. I actually listened to this on audiobook and it was a full cast audio which I personally find the most enthralling and addictive when I'm listening to my audiobooks. Like I do not want to put them down. I also thought that I had the entire thing figured out but in the end I was not right so I really enjoyed that aspect because I hate being able to call the endings of thriller books. Especially. Coming in at number seven is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid and I freaking love this book. I know it took me so long to read this as well as another book that is on this list that will be coming up later on but I can honestly say that Taylor Jenkins Reid is probably one of my favorite authors now. I find their writing style to be so immersive and just addictive like I can not put these books down when I pick them up. 
I think that the characters that she writes are just so believable and feel so real. I love picking up her books. Anytime I pick up her books, I always just feel that I am like the character's friend and they're like talking to me and telling me their story. This one I fell in love with the Reva siblings which literally all of America did because that's the whole point of the story but their drama is just so much fun to read about. It's a really good time, it's angsty, it's drama filled, it's just a good time and I highly recommend you read it if you haven't but I mean everybody has at this point. Coming in at number six is Reckless Girl by Rachel Hawkins and this book took me by surprise because I did not think that it would end up on my favorites list and I was shocked with how much I thoroughly enjoyed this. This is more of a newer release and it follows 25 year old Lux who after the death of her mother decides to follow her very charming boyfriend Nico to Maui to sail across the world on his ship the Susanna but when she arrives she discovers that the Susanna is in need of a new motor and Nico cannot afford that so now months later he comes to her with this proposition where two college girls, Brittany and Emma, have offered him $50,000 to take them to this private secluded island. So Lux is very hesitant to agree to this but she ends up reluctantly agreeing and they go to this island and they discover that there is already a couple staying on the island who have made themselves at home. They quickly become friends with Jake and Eliza but then a third stranger comes to the shore and he makes everybody very very uncomfortable comfortable and as he spends more time with the group he blows many many secrets out of the water and it's like the story of that. It is such an addictive and thrilling story. You really have to put your believability at the door and just kind of shut it, lock it in a little key box and not touch it because like this would never happen but it is so fun. I read this book in one sitting because I was just so enthralled and brought into the story. It was such an addictive writing style. You cannot help getting dragged into it and the the drama and all the secrets that were unfolding, I was so invested in figuring out what people were hiding and what it meant. The main point of view is the main character Lux but we also get some chapters from other characters as well as like the dark history of the island through letters and emails which I thought was really fascinating. Just the overall creepy vibes of this island were so much fun to read about. So this is definitely I think personally a very underrated title that a lot of people haven't read yet but I highly recommend you do because it is so much fun. Okay, so coming in at number five is actually a duology. I only own the first one, but I read the second one as an e-arc and I fell in love with this series. It actually is not a duology, I stand corrected, because when I read the second book, I discovered it's actually a series and I was heartbroken and left in sorrow and just so much heartbreak, but that's besides the point. It is The Prison Healer and The Gilded Cage by Lynette Noni. The third book is coming out in June 2022, so I got a little bit to wait, but I am obsessed with this story and these characters. If you don't know, it basically follows Ziva, who is a 17 year old who has been in Zalandov death prison for the last 10 years as the resident prison healer. When Tilda, the rebel queen, arrives in her infirmary, she is given the task to keep this person alive until they are able to fulfill the order by trial, which is basically a tournament or a set of four elemental trials that the person has to complete in order to be set free. This trial is only assigned to the most dangerous of criminals. Kaiba receives a note from her family that says, keep her alive, we are coming. And so Kaiba decides to trade places with the queen and take on this trial by ordeal in order to keep her alive. If she is successful, then she gets to be sent free and it's like the story of that. But this is such an action-packed, fast-paced, super addictive story and I was drawn into it from the very first chapter. Throughout these two books, I have fallen in love with every single one of these characters. I hold them so close to my heart and I just want nothing bad to happen to them, but like obviously so many bad things happen to them and I, like I said, thought I was going into the second book with a nice conclusion coming and like happily ever after coming my way 
and I was wrong. I was so wrong, but I am so invested in this story now and these characters that I cannot wait for the third book, and it quickly climbed the ladder of my favorite books of 2021, so I highly recommend this series if you haven't checked it out yet. It is worth the heartbreak in the end, okay? It's worth it. Read it. Coming in at number four, I have Defy the Night by Bridget Kremer, and this was actually my first Bridget Kremer book, which a lot of people have read The Curse So Dark and Lonely first. I have not read that yet, but this book makes me want to pick up the rest of her books because I freaking love this story. I think that this is a retelling of Robin Hood. I believe that's the case, but honestly, I'm not sure. I just saw a lot of similarities between this story and Robin Hood, so I'm just gonna say it is, and if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but this plot is so immersive and addictive. I could not put this book down. I believe this is another one that I read fairly quickly. And this is another one where the characters are truly the stars of this book. I love every single one of them. I will say that the plot is pretty predictable. It is pretty obvious what's going to be happening, but I still had so much fun reading it that I don't even care. I think that the characters are really what shone for me in this book. Again, that's pretty much what all of these books are or just I fell in love with these characters, but they were all so complex and so much fun to learn more about, especially Prince Korik. I was so invested in him and what his relationships were with everybody in the kingdom, and I also just really loved his relationship with Tessa and how they needed to learn to trust one another, and it was just so, so good. So if you have not picked this up or have been thinking about picking it up, this is your sign. Please pick it up. I want somebody else to talk about it because like nobody has read this book and it's really upsetting that I cannot gush about it with anybody. Next up, I have All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. This is another one where the characters just stole my heart. I went into this book completely blind, so I definitely recommend doing that because it blows you out of the water when you have no idea what it's about. There are pirates, mermaids, magic, uh, monsters, romance, non-stop action. The magic system was also really cool. In this world, people are only able to learn and control one part of magic or else it consumes them. There's seven different forms of magic that people can control, which I found very interesting to learn more about those. This is another one where the found family is just so well done, and I loved the banter between all these characters. I read the second book, and I won't lie, it was very disappointing because I loved this book so much. So, I mean, if you haven't watched my most disappointed books of 2021, then, um, spoiler. That's on the list, but I just really recommend reading this first book and treating it as a standalone because it's so good. Coming in at number two is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Yes, round of applause. I finally read this book and you were all right. It is so good. It is so stinking good. I'm not giving a synopsis of this book because this is one of the most popular books on booktube. Everybody knows what it's about, but I became immediately immersed in this woman's life. I was so invested in her life and everything that she encountered. I could not put this book down. I just wanted to know more about her, which is so weird because she's not even real. Like, I felt like I needed to Google Evelyn Hugo to learn more about her, even though, like, she doesn't exist. It's not a real person. Like, in my head, she felt so real. I really liked how the chapters were broken up into the husband's names. I think that that was a really cool way to tell the story. This is another one that just has incredible found family dynamics. I could not stop reading about these characters and I very rarely cry at books, but this one got me. So to me, that is a sign of a really great book. I also just loved how complex literally every single character in this book is. They are all just so multi-layered, but you could not help falling in love with them. If you have have not already read this beautiful book. I highly recommend it, but I know that you all have, and if you haven't, again, this is your sign. Pick it the fuck up. And then the final book that I have to talk about, my number one book of 2021, is In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland. This is another one that I think is so underrated. Nobody has read this book. It is the one that I recommend to literally everybody. So this follows Rovan, who is a pansexual blood mage. Since the death of her father when she was seven years old, she has been hiding her powers from the crown. When her powers are accidentally uncovered, she is brought to the palace and assigned 
find an undead warrior to keep her powers in check. Wishing to escape her new destiny, Rovin has to turn to two people that she meets in the palace and she has to learn to trust them. As time goes on, they uncover a secret that starts a rebellion between the world of the living and the undead and it's like the story of that. I was initially so excited for this book when I found out that it was about a polyamorous pansexual blood mage. Like, hello, sign me up, yes please. I absolutely loved this story and the representation that it brought in such a casual way. Obviously, Rovin is pansexual, which I do not see very often in books, so I loved her character. She's also just so fierce and such a badass character. My little heart sang. I also really loved the two side characters. Lydia is a lesbian princess who you are not sure if you can trust when you first pick up this book. And then Jaffa is an asexual non-binary prince who just stole my heart right from the beginning. This is another one, found family dynamics I fell in love with so completely. I also really loved the magic system in this. I found it to be so fascinating how the blood mage's power were passed on to the next generation only when the previous one was killed. I thought that, that was so intriguing. I also really love how this is a standalone and I didn't have to wait for a conclusion. I do honestly wish that there was a sequel just because I love these characters and this story so much so I do want to see more of them but I think that it wrapped up so nicely and it definitely earned my spot at number one for 2021. Alright everybody so those were my favorite books of 2021 my top 10. Let me know down below if you have read any of these and what you thought of them and also let me know your favorite books of the year and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!